Hi, I'm Angela, and today I'm going to try to paint some daisies using a negative painting technique. Now, negative painting is painting the negative space that defines a positive space. In this case, the negative space is going to be our daisy, and the positive space is going to be all of our background color. Now, I started out just by sketching some circles on this porcelain nightlight cover, and I'm using a number four quilled shader and some mixing yellow paint to just fill in these yellow centers to my daisies. And you can see I'm not really being too careful about my strokes or anything like that. I'm just getting the paint on there and um, making sure that I have a good even coverage of the mixing yellow. Now my china paint is mixing yellow china paint and my paints are mixed from powder to paint consistency using mineral oil. And then I use an oil base, it's a Capiba oil based painting medium that I thin with and use on my brush as my painting medium. So that's pretty much the tools that I'm using here. A number four, like I said, quilled shader, mixing yellow paint, my painting medium, and that's pretty much it. So I'm going to go ahead and fill these circles in and we're going to get started making what's going to look like a hot mess. And what I really want to show everybody is you don't have to be super careful getting your paint on. You don't have to have perfect strokes or anything like that because what matters most in a negative painting is what you're actually removing. So when we get to actually wiping out the flower, that's actually where our painting is going to take form. It's going to take shape. So if you can bear with me why I make a horrendous mess of paint on this poor little nightlight, at the end you'll see the daisy take shape. So let's get started on this background. I'm using a half inch china painting brush and this is a metal ferrule brush and this is uh, part synthetic, part Cassian squirrel. It's a, it's a mix. And I'm going to go ahead and brush mix some shading green and some navy blue and a little warm gray to make a nice dark shadow color. And you can see that I've loaded the left side of my brush heavy with paint and the paint gets lighter as it goes to the right side of my brush. I'm going to put that left dark side up against that yellow center and then let the color get lighter the further it gets away from that center. And that's because I want to keep the darkest shadows up underneath my flower. So I'm just going to go around each one of these yellow centers and you can see I'm just doing quick jabby kind of dabbing the paint on. I'm not worried about the um, type of stroke I'm doing. I don't even think there's a name for this stroke. Um, I'm just kind of slapping paint on here. I'm not being careful other than to just try and go around the edges of my yellow centers, but you know, it's just get the paint on there. Don't worry about being nice and neat, making perfect strokes. We're going to smooth all of it down uh, once we get the paint on there. Right now it's just about getting color onto the porcelain. And as I move away from the main flowers in the center of the piece, I'm going to lighten my paint up. I'm going to use more of just that warm gray and go ahead and make a lighter color. And that's going to be the color that's going to go around those smaller flowers that are towards the outside of the painting. And that's just for some variety and because the darkest part of my painting is going to be the center part, the center of interest and the shadows won't be quite as dark as we get further away. So that's the reason that I'm changing the color and also for variety. I want uh, the background to not be one homogeneous color. I want there to be different shades of blue and gray and greenish blue. I want some variety in there to make it interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and just spread this paint on here and not worry too much about making it all pretty like I said. We're going to make a heck of a mess here and then we're going to clean it up. So now that I got my paint on there, what I need to do is kind of smooth out some of these brush marks and smooth out some of this roughness and kind of blend all of this color together. So I'm going to push out some of the paint and oil, but I'm not going to clean my brush. I'm just going to flatten it out, back up on my brush handle, and then I'm just going to smooth and sweep this color together. And the way I do this is I just am very lightly, as I bring the brush over, I'm just barely lightly touching the paint and smoothing everything. And this takes practice. 
Uh, the key is to make sure that your brush is good and flattened out and make sure that you back up off the handle so that you're not putting any pressure and you're just really gently sweeping your paint around and it'll move wherever you want it to go and you can smooth out some of those brush strokes and you can also blend some of that color together so that you don't have real hard lines where it goes from one color to the next. But again, this doesn't need to be perfect. So we're just kind of getting it on there and it kind of looks like a smeared mess, but that's what I want. I want it to be a smeared mess. Now I switch over to a quarter inch square shader and this is the same uh, synthetic uh, squirrel blend as the half inch, it's just a quarter inch, and I've loaded that, fully loaded, with moss green. And I'm just blocking in some leaf shapes, and I'm doing that wet on wet, right on top of that gray background that we just put in. And I'm just doing, blocking in some basic leaf shapes. And again, I'm not worried about being super neat or getting it on super smooth or anything like that. I'm just blocking it in so that they're going to be there so that I know where I want my main leaves to be. And I'll worry about putting highlights and shading and, and getting their shapes uh, and the detail on them later. For right now, I just want some basic color blocking in so that I have placeholders where I know where those leaves are going to be. Now just like we did with our background before, I'm going to use my half inch brush and I'm going to sweep all of this color and blend it together. And that's so that my leaves don't look like they're sitting on top per se, that they kind of melt into the background. I don't want them to look like they're pasted on. So I'm just going to kind of blend everything down a little bit. I don't want to lose um, my green areas where I blocked in color, but I do want to kind of get the edges to kind of melt into that background a little bit. So I'll give it a few sweeps and get everything a little more even and get some of the brush strokes out of my leaves. Now I'm going to go back in with my mixing yellow and my number four quill shader, which is what I used before. And I'm just going to go in and clean up the edges where I got some of the background paint onto the centers. And you can see where my brush will pick up some of that blue paint and I'll just go over to my palette and kind of wipe my brush and get that blue paint off so that I'm not spreading too much of that background gray into my yellow because I do want my centers to remain yellow and not to get too muddy looking. So I'm just going through and straightening up the centers to each one. Now I'm going to push that yellow paint out of my brush and I'm going to pick up some yellow ochre. You could use yellow brown too, pecan, gold, um, whatever you want to use. And I have that loaded on the left side of my brush and I'm going to come down and add some detail. And I'm just going along 
the bottom edge and then doing that little button in the center, that little indent that's in the center of a daisy. And that's just like a little C stroke that I'm putting in the center. And it's kind of like floating in decorative painting or toll painting. I'm using a really super light touch so that I don't really disturb that yellow, wet yellow paint that's underneath and just kind of putting a little detail in there, wet on wet, putting a little shadow along the bottom and then that little C stroke indentation that's in the center of each flower. So as promised, we have made a horrendous mess and now it's time to think about cleaning it up. And the way we're going to do that is I'm going to clean this brush out and I'm just going to have a little bit of painting medium in it. I'm going to press most of that oil out to where I just have a clean brush and it's going to act like a sponge. So I'm going to go through and wipe out each of these petals once to the left and once to the right and you'll see that it leaves smears and some striations and we want that as we clean out these petals and we're going to go over these petals several times to clean the paint out and you notice that I clean the paint out of my brush and the oil out of my brush and blot my brush on a lint free cloth because I don't want to be adding paint or oil we've got enough paint and oil on the surface I want to be removing it this is a negative painting, so we're taking it all the way back down to the white of the porcelain, and that's what's going to be the white of our flower. So we keep going all the way around the flower, making our petal shapes. And don't worry if you get into the yellow in the center, that's fine. We'll clean that up later. And don't worry if it still looks really dirty. We're going to have to go over these petals several times to get the paint out. And we're going to reshape them and you can, that's the beauty of China painting is it moves. So you can move that paint in the background over you can give it a shove and change the shapes of your petals it's it's very forgiving and if you wipe something out and it's too much and you need to add some more background paint in then just grab your half inch shader that has your background color and just smooth some paint back over top of what you wiped out if you wiped out too much or you don't like the shape if you uh, need to add some more background color and you can do that now I will tell you that the trick to getting it all the way white is to not use your painting medium. It's too oily. You need something that's going to evaporate quickly and that is going to clean all of that paint out for you. And so my little trick that I'm going to share with you is denatured alcohol half and half mixed with lavender oil. And I have a jar here. It's off camera. And I did switch my brush. This is a filbert brush. It's a number four filbert. And it is also half fur, half synthetic. And I'm using that now to clean these petals up. And you can see 
I'm cleaning my brush and blotting out the excess oil and alcohol. And you can see how well he cleans these petals all the way down to the white of the china. And those striations, I'm purposely leaving some of that, those streaks because I want those to give details to my petals. Anytime I need a nice, sharp, clean wipeout through a lot of paint, I always go for my jar full of denatured alcohol and lavender oil. And like I said, it's mixed half and half, and it is 100% lavender oil, and it is genuine lavender oil. It's not artificial. Now, you could use spike lavender oil if you didn't have regular lavender oil. And if you didn't want to use denatured alcohol, then you could use 99% uh, isopropyl alcohol. Just make sure it's 99%. You don't want to use rubbing alcohol, and you don't want to use like 70%. Uh, the 70% alcohol has a lot of water in it, so you don't want to be adding water to an oil painting. And the rubbing alcohol, sometimes it can have moisturizers and oils in there, um, and you definitely don't want to be adding more, more oil. So stick to the 99%. I know you can get it on Amazon, probably get it at a pharmacy. And denatured, I will tell you, denatured alcohol works the best, but it's not the healthiest stuff in the world to have around. So, but that's my, uh, my favorite mixture to use to get super clean wipeouts. And the reason I changed brushes is because this brush, this filbert brush, is half synthetic, half squirrel. It's a little more durable. I did not and don't like to put my quilled Kazan squirrel brushes down into alcohol. Um, I don't want to damage that natural quill and I don't want to damage the fur uh, on an expensive brush. The synthetic, uh, half synthetic, half squirrel like this filbert, they're a little more durable and they are a lot cheaper brushes. So I don't want to ruin my really expensive quill brushes. So I stick with the synthetic blend for dipping down into the denatured alcohol lavender oil mix. But you can see it makes a super clean wipeout. And now our daisy is really starting to take shape. And I really like this, the streaks uh, that it leaves on the petals and it kind of naturally uh, puts some, some detail on them and some definition and a little shading. I really like how that looks. Next, we have to clean back up our centers again. So I'm just gonna take that same number four quilt shader, and I've got my yellow paint, my mixing yellow in there, and I'm just gonna go along, and I'm gonna clean up this edge where I got into it while I was making my petals, and it's gonna pick up some of that blue, and you can see I just kinda give that a wipe on my tile that I'm using for a palette so that I'm not muddying up my yellow centers. And I just go along and clean up the edge and get a nice round center to my daisy again. I'm going to clean some of that mixing yellow out and go ahead and side load into that yellow ochre so that I can go ahead and reapply that shading along the bottom of the center that kind of got messed up when I was putting the petals in. So I'll go ahead and lay that back in and while I'm at it I'll go ahead and go over that little C stroke that creates a little indentation, that button in the center of the daisy. And last, I'll go ahead and grab my wipeout tool, and I'm using the pointed end, and I'm just going to stipple some dots into the center of the daisy, and those are going to just leave some, some white little stipple marks for some texture. And that's it. That's how I paint a daisy negative painting. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks so much.